December 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 25 from the Old Testament. These also are Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of King Hezekiah of Judah copied. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, and it is the glory of a king to search out a matter. As the heaven is high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. Remove the dross from the silver, and material for the silversmith will emerge. Remove the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not honor yourself before the king, and do not stand in the place of great men. For it is better for him to say to you, Come up here, than to put you lower before a prince whom your eyes have seen. Do not go out hastily to litigation, or what will you do afterward when your neighbor puts you to shame? When you argue a case with your neighbor, do not reveal the secret of another person, lest the one who hears it put you to shame, and your infamy will never go away. Like apples of gold in settings of silver, so is a word skillfully spoken. Like an earring of gold in an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover to the ear of the one who listens. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the heart of his masters. Like cloudy skies and wind that produce no rain, so is the one who boasts of a gift not given. Through patience a ruler can be persuaded, and a soft tongue can break a bone. When you find honey, eat only what is sufficient for you, lest you become stuffed with it and vomit it up. Don't set foot too frequently in your neighbor's house, lest he become weary of you and hates you. Like a club or a sword or a sharp arrow, so is the one who testifies against his neighbor as a false witness. Like a bad tooth or a foot out of joint, so is confidence in an unfaithful person at the time of trouble. Like one who takes off a garment on a cold day or like vinegar poured on soda, so is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. The north wind brings forth rain, and a gossiping tongue brings forth an angry look. It is better to live on a corner of the housetop than in a house in company with a quarrelsome wife. Like cold water to a weary person, so is good news from a distant land. Like a muddied spring in a polluted well, so is a righteous person who gives way before the wicked. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable for people to seek their own glory. Like a city that is broken down and without a wall, so is a person who cannot control his temper. God, we're not so good at the humble part. Well, I can't speak for anybody else. I can speak for me. I'm not so good at the humble part. It's amazing to me how much I want to be in control of my world, how much I want to be in charge of my world, king of my world or or queen of my world. And it's constant battle. My whole life before you was all about me. There was there was nothing else. It was incredibly self-focused. And now that you've given me a new heart, I obviously know it's wrong and it's something that I have to wake up every morning and work really hard. Humility just is not a second nature uh, to many of us. So where it says uh, it's not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable for people to seek their own glory. We need to seek you first. Uh, You say that multiple places throughout the Bible. And like I've always talked about, My favorite verse in the Bible is John 3.30, where you must become greater and I must become less. It's definitely my life verse, as I constantly work on getting that right. Today on Facebook, I posted a quote from one of my favorite pastors, uh, Francis Chan. And he wrote, can you worship a God who isn't obligated to explain his actions to you? Could it be your arrogance that makes you think God owes you an explanation? And we go from you must become greater to I must become less that if we understand that then we also understand that you're in control that at those moments where we have the arrogance 
to question what is happening in our life, it means that we don't trust you. We don't completely trust you. I had a friend this week who said, I trust God, but, and then went on to say all this stuff that they were questioning in their life. I'm like, no, 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 we don't get to have it both ways. You either trust God or you don't. There's, there's kind of no gray areas in there. And I think it's something that we work on our entire lives of, of understanding who you truly are. It's not that we have anybody here on earth that comes close to who you are. Uh, our kings of this world are definitely very selfish kings. Uh, the people who are presidents and other titles like that are definitely uh, not very humble. So we don't quite understand or are completely able to grasp this concept of your son coming to us, the most royal of royals, in such incredible humility. Uh, as my pastor puts it, he, he set up his entire cornerstone on the case of humility. And that's a little bit baffling to us. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't work hard to figure that out. Um, but it is a little bit baffling to us because our first thing is all about us. How do we take care of our stuff, ourselves? How do, how do we have other people look at us? And Lou Giglio, who's another pastor who I, I just really love how he puts things. He seems to take really big, huge concepts and, and make them pretty straightforward. He says, as today unfolds around you, remember man makes laws. But God designs days. No person or power can trump God's plan for your life. He is ordering all things to fulfill his purpose and his promise for you. The fact that you love us that much, that you're willing to do all those things for us, is baffling unto itself. There's nobody here on earth that loves us that much. But on top of it, the fact that we don't deserve that also leads us to a little bit of confusion. <laughs> in my case a lot of confusion it's amazing to me that you want to be my god no matter how much i mess up you won't leave me no matter how much i mess up and you will forgive me no matter how much i mess up so how could i not want you to be the king on the throne of my heart why do i keep putting me on there instead of you why do I keep thinking that my plan is better than your plan when it never could be ever? God, I pray for guidance, discernment, and understanding of the scriptures that we do need to seek you first, that we need to understand love first with you, that you do need to become greater in our life, that we really need to take a look at how we're interacting reacting and acquiring things and is it because of you and your kingdom or is it because of our own needs and our own desires and our own uh, selfish ambitions I, I know i've said this before but one of my favorite quotes is from c.s lewis uh, i think i've read it so many times i probably have it memorized in my heart Indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. God, allow John 3.30, you must become greater, I must become less, to seep into our hearts, to seep into our lives, and most importantly, to, to seep into our actions. It's that application part that is crucial. Allow us to understand the, the incredible honor and blessing it is to humble ourselves and turn our lives over to you. I don't think we quite get that because in, in our world down here, it's exactly the opposite. Everything needs to point to you. Your ambition is part of who you are. What you do for a living is part of it. Your titles are part of it. But yet you say something completely different in the Bible, the book you gave us to live our lives. God strengthen our resolve. Allow us to see what our lives truly look like. 
Is it all about you? Or is it all about me? And even that concept, you give us grace and mercy with and blessings. In Luke 1, 45, verse 45, you say, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her of the Lord. And of course, we know that that story has to do with Mary. The incredible humility, humility that she had to go through. A virgin who suddenly found herself pregnant. The people around her were no different than the people of today who would have been talking behind her back, gossiping, uh, wondering what's going on. And yet you sent a messenger to her that said, it's going to be okay. Here's what's going on. I need you to trust in God. And she not only placed her trust in you, but so did her husband or her soon to be husband, Joseph. And they believed and trusted in you and they put you first in their lives, above their ego, above their embarrassment, above their ang anxiety probably, and definitely their anxiousness. They put you above all of those things. God, today allow us to trust you, believe in you, and honor you with our humbleness, our obedience, and a life-changing heart. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.